Avening Takeaway, Tor Or, Daf 123. In this Daf, it continues from the previous Daf, describing in detail some of the process of davening. And in particular, it talks about the his boneness, the 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 uh, focus meditation that we have and should have in davening. In particular, when we have the the thoughts of how Hashem, from being so far removed from the world in all the worlds, comes down through a series of contractions, timsumim, and through those timsumim come out creations or, or, or uh, beings, not just from Bria creations, but but uh, all kinds of beings from all the worlds and angels and worlds and chambers and all these things and as things are continually going through the process what is known as a seder seder histalshlus and through the different symptomim we have this amazing multitudinous variety and, and diversity of creation and as we think about that is it's related to a bracha that we say in the um every amida or shimon esrei in the weekdays um, it says ata giber le'elam adni, that um, this word adni comes from the word adon, our master, that Hashem is the master over all these creations that were brought in from nothing to something and in all its amazing diversity. And that comes from as an aspect of gavura, of strength from Hashem, that this idea of, of strength is related to um, gavura. Gavura is the name of Hashem that is the aspect of how this energy then divides up into all its many different little pieces and parts and, and creations and, and elements and, and that tremendous diversity. And so that strength, that gibor, is, that, that gavura is, is the process by which then this comes about and Hashem then becomes the adon, the, the master over all of this. When we think about this fully, especially during the brachas uh, before the Shema, it will arouse in us an amazing love to want to uh, just connect with Hashem and, and, and become one with Hashem. And from that process, the mimer goes and explains that from there will then come out, if we do it properly, an aspect of awe and fear, a tremendous one to pull back, to, to uh, become, um, as it were, away from that, become actually battle, become nullified, even in our metzias, to to completely nullify ourselves from this awesomeness that we came so close to. And then that will, again, arouse another love to rush for Hashem. And, and the, this process of love, as, as we mentioned in another time, that, that there's an aspect, you know, when it's, there's a love, there's a one who loves that, that thing. So there's an aspect of identity there. But then that that's the love that rushes towards and it's called ratzai rushes towards hashem and then there's an immediate retreat so to speak a shave a return and that return from that awe and fear then creates a bittel a, a tremendous bittel and then that in turn does another one and this cycles continuously and if we keep the his boneness going it will continue cycling and this is also the way the malachim the angels the different kinds of angels, whether they're the actual malachim or the eifane hakadosh or the, or etc., the different types of angels, they're constantly going through a ratzay v'shayv. It says they're constantly going up and down, and which is a becomes um, a resonance, you know, a back and forth, and in, in continual in this way. And this this energy becomes a tremendous spiritual energy that's that's now bringing about uh, the different worlds and the different you know, beings. And, and what's happening and so and interestingly so when we we will do that and and through this arousal from below we do that ratzai the rush to hashem and then the shave back and then return etc that it there's a, a counterpart that's coming from above to below from hashem um that's not called ratz of a shave it's termed mati vale mati mati means like it's present it's it's evident and then suddenly it's not evident and the process is the converse. It's we rush towards Hashem and as it were, the stalkos, we, we remove ourselves as it were from this world and all the limitations of it to return to the oneness of Shem. And then that then we have to come back. Hashem initially brings an, a, a revelation down to us and then sends it back to um, becoming not evident anymore. And then that 
continually goes. And so there's there's a counterpart. One can almost imagine as as we're rushing to a shem, a shem is rushing back to us, and then when we retreat, it retreats back, and it's a constant back and forth. This is a, a very interesting phenomena. It says in the mimer that the explanation of this can be found in another place. Uh, I'm not going to suggest that, that I'm going to explain it from there, but th it is explained that this energy, this, this back and forth that Hashem is doing, and then we sort of tune into by our Ratzai Vashayv, that um, this back and forth, Mati Vlumati, it's evident, not evident, evident, not evident, uh, is the how the all um, time and, and space is created. Because as, as Hashem becomes evident and now existence is here, suddenly it can't hold on its own because then in the face of this, this revelation, it may dissolve back into nothingness. So Hashem has to pull back from that to not allow it to disappear. But then without it, it could disappear. So Hashem has to return back to it to keep it going. And so all existence really is a reverberation. It's a, it's a, it's a vibration, if you will, or a, a resonance. That's a wave pattern of positive, negative, positive, negative, not negative in a bad sense, but negative meaning a return back to where it was. And we see very fascinatingly that so much of you know, this world that we're living in, and I'm talking about the spiritual worlds that we've just described, which are the essence of it, but we're talking about the physical world and how, as we're learning about the world, so much of it is known as coming in waves. A wave is a, a, a positive side and a negative side. Again, not, not negative in, in a bad way, but a, a move forward and then a move backwards. Move forward and move backwards. The, the electricity that we have in the wall that we plug into is what's known as alternating currents. Alternating because it's alternating between moving forward and moving backwards. And it's going at a, a very quick speed. And we find that so many other patterns, all radiation in the world, electromagnetic radiation from light to heat, to microwaves, to um, uh, uh, x-rays, to all kinds of different, all the different spectrum of, of radiation is all in this kind of wave pattern. And we find so many other things in wave patterns, um, different, different uh, revolutions and, and, and repeated cycles or these same kind of periods, the, the way the moon works, the way the sun, um, you know, the, the, the different other things. And so it's very, very fascinating that this way the world is naturally operating can be found in this kind of process that, that we're tuning into in the davening. And by doing that, we can then reach a level where we can now hit what's known as, you know, the, the Shemona Esrei, the, the, the Amida davening, in which case, and this is where the mimer continues, that it then allows um, this, this process to go on where we can now um, have Hashem come into the world, you know, change things as it were, there's reifei chalim, et cetera. Uh, and so that is, you know, the process of the davening, which then refers back to, as we talked about, you know, the, the vertebrae and the, the spinal column and the nerve system and how it goes from the brain through the nerve system, through the arms, which is the love and fear, there's that process and, and how it all comes together and how this then through this meditation and, and trying to tune into that, to appreciate that at some level and, and try to live into that um, experience, that then is a preparation for drawing down uh, in, the, in the analogy of the human body, drawing down the, the intellectual aspects, the Chochmah and Bina, which can come as a result, and that's the Torah learning that happens later, which is known as the, the panemius relative to the davening, which is the chitzonius. And one last thought with this, this is a very powerful uh, lesson, you know, daft today. Um, this one is, it explains that if we can't seem to get that his boneness going, we feel like we just can't tune in and can't get, in, you know, excited about this process. So with that, uh, we should then cry out to Hashem from that hiddenness that we seem to feel, the, the Hester Panim, the, the, the act of the Hashem feeling you know, hidden from us that we can't break into and, 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 and get a feeling for. And that crying out reaches the height of heights and also can reach to the essence of Hashem that we're reaching through the other way as well. And so uh, 
if, if we have a, especially with Bainanim, we don't always, as Halavai, we should be reaching the level of Bainanim. We don't always have the inspiration, but we should always then try to feel like we, we just have to cry out that we don't want to be separated from Hashem. We don't want to be involved in anything that will keep us away. And even though we can't be inspired by the other, we are crying out to Hashem to connect to us and us to connect to Him. And that process will also then, the Mimer says, reach out to Hashem in the deepest way which we're um, aiming for, the Atmos and the Hus with our essence of our nefesh.